Hey to YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this Volvo V40 T4. The name of the color is silver. Yep, that's all, just silver. Uh, and the paint code is 427. I'm gonna be using some standoff solvent based base coat and we'll also be going through all the prep work. Well, a lot of the prep work anyway. Um, we'll also do a bit of masking, we'll get it in the booth, we'll do some uh, yeah, base coat application, wet on wet, we'll go through all the gun settings and uh, I'll do my best to keep you guys interested in the entire video. So obviously I'm um, starting off by cleaning all the panels down first and I've got the methylated spirits and water mixture in that uh, trigger sprayer. Um, so those of you who are in the USA, that's also called denatured alcohol, uh, it's called methylated spirits here in Australia. Um, so yeah, that's just a good uh, good cleaner really. Um, you can use just straight water, but the um, methylated spirits does sort of help clean the panels down a bit. If there's any ever any um, big uh, bits of uh, oil oil patches or even tar road grime stuff like that, sometimes you've got to get either a bit of thinners or even a bit of prep sole onto it. Obviously, then just going around and uh, making sure I tape up the surrounding areas, any headlights, bumper bars, uh, surrounding panels, make sure that um, I don't hit them with my sanding paper. And I'm um, going to start off first by getting the block out, just 180 grit. I like to 180 grit most of my panels down. Um, and we, we do get quite a lot of primer, like our apprentice Moses, who lots of you guys are probably pretty familiar with. Um, he uh, puts a nice amount of primer on so that I can just uh, block right into it. If you don't get enough primer on, <clears throat> it depends on the um, the repair, obviously, you know. If the panel beaters are just pumping out some really top quality work, um, you might get away with three coats minimal primer and you might be able to block it with 240, but I've found you're just better off putting that little bit more primer on, teach the apprentices to put a bit more primer on and block it with uh, 180. Um, yeah, look, sometimes if I've done the repair and I know that it's done really well, or even if the panel beater's done it and I know that like it's just a small repair, um, sure, put three coats on it. Block it with 320 even sometimes. Um, but on your average jobs that have got big filler repairs on it, whack four coats on it, please, Moses. And uh, I like to block, give it a good block down. So yeah, that's just the 3M blocks, the hard blocks, they're the thin blocks, um, and the 3M purple sandpaper. Um, you can't beat the 3M purple sandpapers. There might be some out there that are on par with it, but yeah, I'd say 3M are right up there with their um, sandpapers. Even their masking tapes, you can see the purple masking tape you've got there. That's uh, obviously good quality uh, masking. Um, and because this is a quarter panel, um, I didn't actually include any of the footage of it because it's a new quarter panel on the car. I've had to paint uh, the insides of the quarter panel where it's all been welded on, even up underneath the wheel latches. But most of the time over here in Australia anyway, um, if it's just black up under those wheel latches, the panel beaters will do that. So the guys in the body shop, they'll usually do all the underbody. That's usually a panel beater's job um, because they can get it up in the air, whether or not it be up on the chassis machine, um, or they can get it up uh, on a jack, pull the wheel off. Um, they can get some, usually just a bit of body deadener or some seam sealer up under there, does the trick. If it needs a bit of color under there, or a specific primer color and then a bit of silver, yeah, we'll do it. But most of the time, uh, panel beaters sort that one out. But that's a very important thing um, to think about that, you know, these people have gone and got in an accident, but they've still paid their insurance, you know. Um, this is a brand new car. They might want to keep this car for another 10 years. And if you're just being a lazy bastard and not doing those things properly, you're greatly uh, affecting the quality of that car. Because if there's little bits of bare metal up under that wheel arch, or even if you haven't seam sealed it properly, stones are gonna chip your paint away if you don't use the correct primer. Um, water leaks are gonna come in. The panel's just gonna start rusting away, so. Um, underbody protection and seam sealer work and all that kind of stuff is very important and yeah just for the sake of saving two minutes or being lazy don't don't try and rush those kind of steps but as I say I didn't include all the footage of that anyway moving on with the job um, I've obviously blocked all the repairs down again I didn't include all the footage of it um, once that's done I've just got a bit of 320 grit on the orbital sander with the um, soft back uh, the soft interface pad on it too um, once I've got the 320 done, I'll go around and do my edges. Sometimes on bigger repairs like this, I'll like to um, get a bit of 180 and sand those thick edges depending on what the primer's like and it can uh, save a bit of time when you do go to do the 500. 
Um, but again, that's just going to come with uh, practice. If you're sitting there and you're standing forever with the 500 grit, maybe forget about it and just go 180 and then 500. Work your way down through the sanding uh, grades. Even on the door here, there was just a little scratch there, as you can see. I put a bit of fine filler in it, went back onto the rest of the body, um, and came back. And I'm just using that razor blade um, just to shave it down, rather than getting a block. Sometimes, even when using a block, because these panels they're, they're quite flimsy, um, what'll happen is that you'll you'll block that down, but then you you're sort of moving that panel, so you can end up with a bit of a, a high spot um, where the filler was um, because you've sanded either side of the filler even though there's no filler left because you've sounded either side of that filler that's like a impression from where the filler was previously um, so using that razor blade will actually sort of shave that down uh, flat it works quite well it's a handy trick to know um, quite quick too it's, it's not much different than uh, shaving a rundown but as you see there I'm just going over those edges just a piece of 500 grit I'm going to be wet on wet, um, using some wet on wet primer over this quarter panel anyway, so if there are a few sort of deeper scratches, it's not going to be the biggest deal. Um, good chance they'll be able to fill up with that wet on wet primer. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm uh, on the tail end of the cold at the moment, but I'm feeling good. I'm in a good mood and I feel like making this video. The video is actually a bit old now, probably about two, three months old. Um, and I think I've mentioned in a few other previous videos that I've been, um, I got to the point where I started getting bored of making YouTube videos and I did a couple of shout out videos for a couple of friends, Tony's Refinishing and uh, my mate Despedza from over at Despedza Moto Vlogs and all that. And I did one video where I sat in front of the camera like this and it totally changed it. It just brought a new dynamic to the videos and it made, and it's making me just more uh, enthusiastic and yeah, I feel, I feel like, feel happier to do the narration on these videos because yeah, as I said in previous videos, I'll just, I'll get to the point where I just, I've got too particular with my narration and it stopped being fun, you know? Um, so yeah, see how we go. Just a bit more of a rel relaxed uh, vibe to it. I'm just chilling out. I'm watching the same footage as you guys are. I'm just watching on the um, the thumbnail on my video editor, and uh, chill out. You can have yourself a coffee and a vape too if you like. Obviously, um, got it in the booth. Give it a good clean down. Just got the um, air blower, blew the shit out of it. Obviously. You probably noticed that when I was doing my prep work, I kept the plastic uh, over all those door jams. Um, and there's all the edge masking done. Um, always like to keep it clean because if you don't, if you get those bits of dust in your edges and stuff like that when you and you mask over it, that's just little bits of stuff that can come out when you do start painting. Just throw that piece of plastic over it. And I've decided from now on, um, I'm going to update my description to include those uh, Colad blades because I do get quite a few people asking about it. I don't make any money out of it. They're 60 cents worth anyway. What kind of commission would I would I make out of a sale on that? Um, I'm just going to include the um, yeah the link to the, that product in my in my descriptions from now on because they are a very handy handy little tool. Masking stage, again, I'm just skipping through the footage. Um, it would get quite long and <laughs> even harder for me to narrate and even more of a pain in the ass. I haven't made a Gunman Raw video for ages, actually. I might have to um, do a couple more uploads over there. I don't think I've done one in over two months. So um, There seem to be quite a lot of people that like that channel. So And it's still ticking over with the views. It's getting, I think there's like 40,000 views a month still, so... Still getting a bit of interest over there. <coughs> yeah, on the tail end of this cold, as I just mentioned before. Um, but yeah, obviously just wiping all the panels down with um, wax and grease remover or prep sole. Uh, making sure I did the blend areas first, which was literally just the top of that fender anyway. Um, just to make sure I don't contaminate the blend area with uh, some of the primer dust, which I've mentioned in other videos as well. Um, but yeah, continuing on. So that bumper bar there, look, as I said, this is a couple of months old. 
I can't remember if it's a brand new bar or just came with some black primer on it, but it looks like it was a brand new bar. We, um, sorry, it, it's definitely a brand new bar. I can't remember if it was bare plastic or if it came with a bit of primer on it. Um, it looks like it was bare plastic. Um, so I obviously would have put some plastic primer over it first um, and then put my non-sanding primer or wet on wet primer down. They do have a option to um, with the wet on wet primer you can put this plastic additive in with it and it makes it so that it will stick to your plastic. We've got it but I don't like it. I've used it once or twice and it just dries too quick. Um, it's not a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, yeah it just seems to dry too quick and it like your own overspray like say you paint one quarter of the uh, a third of the bumper bar um, the corner and then by the time you get to the center all your overspray is dried so when you go to spray over your own overspray um, there'll be like little high spots and little bits of crap all through it. So I've just found you're better off using just a standard 1K plastic primer and then wet on wet over the top of that. Um, and what you saw me do on that door there, that was just a bit of standard 2K reducer um, over there where I was blending out the, the wet on wet so that the, um, what I was talking about before, like the, the overspray, um, that's not gonna be going all dusty and when you do spray over it, you got all these little bits of crap that you're spraying over. I'm going to be doing the same on this quarter panel. Throw the wet on wet down over the areas that it blends out. Just put a bit of thinners over the edge. Works a treat. Um, I was told that originally by a paint rep from here in Perth. And he told me to use fade out thinner. And I used it a few times in the water base, uh, waterborne, and it worked. But then there was one or two times and I got these really funny, start, like weird reactions and I think that the um, it was AK350 fade out thinner and I think it was like staying active under there um, and then when I cleared it it sort of yeah sort of woke it back up I guess and um, it started yeah like really weird reactions sort of like a fry up but not so yeah um, at the end of the day you gotta try a few different ways see what works see what doesn't and um, come up with the best methods you know so yeah, obviously under the base coat stage, Segola 4600 Extreme Aqua, DVR Aqua is the air cap and 1.3mm setup on it. Um, usually need uh, full floor with that, um, full fan, maybe four turns out, sorry, full fan and uh, 1.5 bar. I adjust that a little bit, sometimes like if I need to get rid of the mottle on a silver bonnet, I might go up to like went to 1.7 once and it went really nice it laid that silver down a little bit better um, also in, in winter I find I need to use a little bit more pressure as well even just depending on the boot that you're in I did like this respray back at spray tech finishing where I had my own shop there for um, a year and it's that booth like the, the airflow is terrible in it and I don't know why but what was spraying at 1.5 bar perfectly with standox in this booth it was just over atomizing you were sort of starting to lose the center of your fan and also had overspray all over the place um i don't know T different booths might have been sprayed slightly differently it's uh, not outside the realms of possibility There you go, gunman just rambling crap about spray painting, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, so yeah, again, I've just cut out parts of the footage there because we could do this forever, couldn't we? Just putting coats on, coats after coats. Put the in important stuff in, the enjoyable stuff in. I left all the uh, the clear coat footage as one. And um, it's pretty warm here, so I'm not really having to uh, do any waiting in between coats. Like was on this day, a couple of months ago, it would have been. 30, 35, uh, right in the middle of uh, a Perth summer, about 30, 35 every day, beautiful. Um, so yeah, by the time you've got around, by the time you get it back around to the first part, you're right to just keep going. Uh, no flash off times, which is good. Um, water, that was a bit of a pain in the ass in winter, you know. You'd have to come out and then wait, get the air blows on it. Um, the application technically was a little bit quicker, but you'd wait, you'd lose it in your drying times. So, and literally, like once I put the base coat down, I'll go out, clean the gun out, mix my clear up, put it in the clear gun, come back in, you're right to go, you know. 
you might have to wait a few extra minutes in the middle of winter. Um, but yes, uh, silvers in the Standox Solvent don't really cover that well. Like if that was a silver in the Chromax Pro or Standox uh, Stando Blue range, that would have covered in one coat, one and a half coats, depending. Like some are worse than others, obviously, but usually you get coverage in one and a half coats. And because they say it's, it's a full um, value shade system, you're meant to put the wet on wets down. Uh, but it doesn't always work that way, you know. But yeah, I'm still loving that Segola 4600 Extreme. It, yeah, I love it. It gets the base coat on really nicely. For some reason, I've swapped back over to the Pro Light, as I usually do for clear coat. Um, but in saying that, like, I really liked it for the clear coat as well. Um, I've actually got the HVLP air cap, which I didn't even use because I don't like HVLP guns. I mean, I can use them, but unless I'm forced to by my employer or whatever regulations there may be in the country, I'm not going to use them out of choice. Um, so yeah, obviously what I was just using there was the um, uh, 599, the Standox uh, 599. That's basically a base coat stabilizer. And it's basically just you get a clear base coat and it just helps the, um, the color blend basically just fills, fills in the scratches from your prep work and uh, stops any halo effect uh, from where your silver is going to be blending out. Um, lots of the dark colours, you don't need it. Most solid colours, you won't need it. Um, if anything, on a solid colour, it may work in the other direction and it may make it even worse. Um, but yeah, a lot of the time with solid colours, I try not to blend them. Like I did this um, Land Cruiser, it's like a pastel-y, FJ, FJ Land Cruiser, one of the new ones pastely sort of like khaki green type color terrible thing and it was a couple of tiny little scratches in it and i tried blending it i used some triple to s as a blending aid and bang it just ruined the color like it went really yellow um my color was actually pretty good i reckon if i had to put the color over the whole panel it would have looked a lot better and i just like oh hopefully it'll change with clear you know like hopefully where um my color and Hopefully it wouldn't change the edge, but it would change the center because I knew it didn't blend out. It was, yeah, should have should have known better. But um, yeah, we all we all make mistakes every now and then. Um, but yeah, as I said, this was a little bit of an older video. So now I come to clear coat. I'm using the Titania air cap. It's a little bit old for me to remember 100% how I liked it, but I don't think I liked the Titania as much as I did the the clear air cap. So they got the DVR Titania, DVR Clear, DVR Aqua, and then the DVR HVLP. That's the air cap selections for the Segola 4600 Extreme. Um, basically the same as uh, the same selections as the 4500, but they've just put DVR in front of it, um, and they are different. So you can't just go and grab your 4500 air caps and fluid needles and tips and all that and exchange them over because uh, they won't fit. Um, but yeah, definitely a top quality gun. I, my biggest uh, sort of criticism, I reckon if they drop the price by $50, you'd be a little bit more competitive in the market. Um, especially like a lot of uh, people in the West, say, or Australia anyway, um, I'd, I'd probably say the same for USA, Canada, and the UK, and New Zealand. Um, when you've got a gun like the Pro Light that's selling cheaper than a, a fairly unknown gun, you know, like it's, I guess it's starting to get a bit more well known through people like me in the online community. Um, but if you know that the Pro Light's going to be a damn good gun, why would you take a, a gamble on another gun? I mean, some people do just like to be different, um, and especially if it's that a uh, bit more expensive, you know. Um, whereas if they, they were just on par, I reckon if they were on par with the Devilbus or maybe even a little bit cheaper, they'd sell more units and possibly make themselves even more money um, <coughs> because they're, they're doing more volume. But apart from that, yeah, I can, can barely really fault the guns. I wasn't the biggest fan of the 4500s, um, but the 4600s, yeah, really good gun. As you can see there, this is just a, a part of another car which I had to uh, put a coat of clear coat on. Can't remember. <laughs> offhand exactly what happened, it might have had a few bits of crap in it, had to redo it or something like that, but it is what it is. Yeah, so continuing on, um, the settings would have stayed the same for this gun, uh, yeah, so that was like full fan, and I think I had it <coughs> two and a half turns out on the fluid, excuse me for that, because um, they're a fast gun, and that was my biggest gripe with the 4500, they were a touch slow, 
Um, and Sagola actually told me when they got in contact with me to send these guns out, they said, um, we've watched your previous review, we've taken on board the criticism, and we think that we've sped this gun up. And they definitely have, you know. Um, also, the Titania specifically on the 4500 had these tiny little air holes in them. Um, and they would just block up, like, you would clean the gun out perfectly, um, and next time it'd take the tiniest little bit of clear, or, or even just a bit of thinners that was contaminated with a bit of colour on there or something, um, and it would just block up and it wouldn't spray next time. So, uh, there's a fairly easy workaround to that, and you would just dunk the air cap in the, um, in the pot or in some thinners overnight, uh, so next time you use it, it's going to be clean. Uh, won't have time to obviously dry out, uh, but yeah. As you can see, it's getting a nice coat on, but it just seemed a little bit slower or something. I didn't like it as much as the DDR clear air cap. Um, I'm starting to run out of shit to say. I might even just whack some music on for the rest of this video, guys. I'll see you guys at the end, and uh, yeah, hope, hope you enjoy the video, and give it a thumbs up if you did.
So that's it for this one, Gunners. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you did, give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought. I'll do my best to get back to any relevant questions. If you would like to get yourself a Gunman t-shirt or some other merchandise, I've got hats. I've got a few things over the back there um, and I'll ship them all out from here in Australia. So stubby coolers and uh, singlets and that. So yeah, there's a link at the end of this video to my store page. Um, yeah, pretty good uh, rates to the US. I think you're only paying 16 Australian dollars shipping and obviously the exchange rate's gonna help that so you might only even pay around $12 US. Uh, some stupid reason, it's too expensive for um, the UK and Europe. It cost me $22, I can't really improve on that. I can only pass the costs on to you. So yeah, I'll leave it at that for this one, Gunners. Until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production.